Once in a lifetime, they said. Once in a flipping lifetime. What a bunch of lies. Because yes, just one year after we did have the rock and Cena with that very tagline, we set it up again at the 2013 Royal Rumble. And the way WWE tried to justify this was, well, John Cena won the Royal Rumble and The Rock won the WWE Championship. What did you expect us to do? The idea, of course, was to make Dwayne Johnson the champion because then when he was doing his many PR engagements, it could basically serve as one kind of promotional tool. When you do look at it that way, it does make a lot of sense. And then just go and look at all the money WrestleMania 29 made. It was stupid. This is also the night when Chris Jericho made his return to the WWE after signing a short term deal under the illusion that when we did get to this WrestleMania, he was going to fight Ryback because WWE wanted to try and rehab him and maybe even make Mr. Feed Me more the WWE champion. And then we got to that WrestleMania and who did Jericho face and lose to? <laughs> Fandango. So just remember that if you are an up and coming wrestler, you just never know. The best story I read from this era though actually comes from an episode of Raw. Now I don't remember this, but maybe you do. Apparently before a commercial break, Ric Flair's music started to play. And as ever, everyone broke down like, oh, I can't believe it. WWE has ruined the surprise. But again, I read it in many places that apparently this was the plan because they wanted people to take their friends going, oh my God, I think the Nature Boy's about to be on Raw. And I like to believe that is true. Kind of smart. But from Phoenix, Arizona, in front of 15,000 fans and 512,000 pay per views, who knew The Rock was a draw? Let's retro up those downs for the Raw Rumble 2013. The opening video lets us know that when it comes to time, you can never get enough. And WWE would know that. They tried to put on a seven hour plus WrestleMania, and as you can tell, I ain't over it. And then start bigging up The Rock versus CM Punk, which is gonna be our main event. And there's this weird trumpet music as if you're watching Sports Center, or as if John Cena is about to come to the ring. I mean, it really is going do 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 do. We then go into our first match, and geez, my knees, trying to make Alberto Del Rio a babyface has got to be one of the most stupidest ideas ever. For starters, it just didn't suit, and here, my word, we are just taking the good guy shovel and trying to smack it into everybody's face. Because when he is making his way out to the ring, he bumps in to Bret Hart, and they may as well have just hugged and said, please, let's love each other, because then maybe everybody else will love you too. I mean, the hitman even has to call Del Rio a Mexican version of himself, and then Alberto says, well, you're a bit like a Canadian version of me. And I was like, I understand what the hell is going on. And Ricardo Rodriguez is stood there the whole time like he's some kind of a child just looking around. And eventually he gets Bret Hart sunglasses. Who the flub wrote this? It is also the setup, obviously, for Alberto Del Rio, a world heavyweight champion taking on the big show. And I can sum this up in one noise. Because of course we've got to the Royal Rumble, which is always going to be the main event in many people's eyes. But of course we have two championships being defended. One was always going to feel a bit meh, and it's definitely this one. Alberto is also going for Hurricane Ranas to once again try to establish that we're meant to cheer him. But this is a terrible plan because it's a last man standing match, so eventually the chair is introduced. Because when Alberto does get this, he basically just taps the big show on the back. Like I actually think he's worried about hurting him. And if there's anybody in the WWE you probably don't need to worry about hurting, it would be the big show. The clue is in the name, he big. And look, I'd rather save chair shots like this than people trying to murder each other, but this ain't it, Chief. And eventually you do get into all the 10 count shenanigans, but it just never feels as anxious as it meant to. Even after the big man choke slams Del Rio, I was like, well, he's clearly gonna get up from that, and he does. And eventually the giant is becoming a boss from Arkham Asylum because he charges at Ricardo Rodriguez. Rodriguez, he misses, and he goes smashing through Barry Barricade. Do you want to know how Del Rio gets around all of this as well? He realizes that the big show is just going to keep getting up to his feet, so he gets some tape and he quite literally tapes Big Show to the ropes. Apparently Show isn't strong enough to break this, even though he was breaking bones seconds earlier. And also, is this really what a good guy would do? Or does it make him a little bit of a dick? So as you can probably tell, I wasn't really into this because there's just no stakes. I didn't believe Alberto Del Rio as a good guy. And it's all very by the numbers, and it's getting it out. Dolph Ziggler was here next, and he told Vicky Guerrero that you are pathetic, so what a nice guy he is, but he also has a master plan. Because he is going to enter the Royal Rumble at number one. He is going to break the record for the longest time served in a Rumble. He's then going to win the Rumble, and because he will be the Rumble winner, as well as Mr. Money in the Bank, he's going to win every single World Championship and unify him. 
And even though this was way back in 2013, 2022 Simon was going, yeah, yeah, you should do that. We would make you a star. Instead, what WWE decided to do was allow him to catch in his briefcase, but then make out like it was a massive fluke. AJ Lee and Big E are with him as well. And Big E is still called Big E Langston. We hold our heads in remembrance of his name. We then get some two camera promos from some people who are gonna be in the Royal Rumble and we absolutely need to start doing this again. We begin with Cesaro who basically goes, I love in the Royal Rumble because I'm foreign. And I was like, thanks Vince. We also get the primetime players who want to win the Rumble for the millions and millions of dollars. And why the hell did we ever break them up? And then we go to Randy Orton who basically just does this. It was weird. John Cena then joins in and you can hear the boos instantly. Wade Barrett already being the Intercontinental Championship wants to add a Royal Rumble win to his CV. And then Sheamus promises that he will win back to back Royal Rumbles because he knows the broke kick. Right back then follows Orton because he just stares at the camera and then blurts out something like, I only eat fruity pebbles. I mean, I don't think he did say that, but honestly, I did not understand one word that came out of this man's mouth. You then get an absolutely crazy match following this because it is the tag team champions of Daniel Bryan and Kane taking on Cody Rhodes and Damian Sando. I mean, my word. It doesn't go overly long because I don't think anybody actually believed we were gonna see a title change here. But in terms of looking back through history, this is absolutely nuts. Because Kane is now a mayor, Daniel Bryan retired, came back and joined AEW. We all know the story of Cody Rhodes. And man, that Damian Sandow, he got put through the ringer. This was obviously a year before Bryan was gonna get his super duper mega push, but you can already see the foundations. And actually being in this tag team allows him to shine forth his sports entertainment side because Kane is all like, yes, yes, yes. Daniel Bryan is all like, no, no, no. And although that sounds terrible coming out of my mouth, actually in practice, it was pretty good. Daniel himself has credited this area with allowing him to climb the sports entertainment ladder. Although I'm always gonna find it weird because do not forget Kane 1997. Back then the big red machine was all like, oh, I'm gonna eat your children. And then here he just wants to give people hugs. I didn't see it coming. Otherwise, it is kind of standard stuff. I mean, you can predict what WWE is going to do here. So Daniel Bryan gets beaten up by Cody and Damien. He tags in Kane. The big man runs wild. Eventually, you get a choke slam. Daniel Bryan locks on the bell lock. And that's it. They're still the champs. You also get some nonsense afterwards because Daniel Bryan and Kane go and open their Raw Rumble numbers. And Kane's all like, oh, that sounds pretty good. But Daniel Bryan's like, oh, man, I can't believe it. Now, this was going to fall down in minutes because Daniel Bryan would enter at number 22. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with 22? But look, the fans love all of this and it is really fun. And isn't that the point, my friends? Up. It was then time for the 2013 Royal Rumble. And as we've already established, the major problem with it is that everybody kind of figured out who was gonna win. Cause despite all the craziness with The Rock and John Cena round one, you could just tell that we were gonna do round two with this time John Cena getting his win back, but also getting the super duper prize of being the WWE champion. And what easier way to set that up and go, oh man, well don't worry about that tagline than by having Cena win the Royal Rumble. So actually fair play to WWE, cause if this was your plan, you executed it well. The reason it does get away with this too is because it is quite loaded with star power. So if you really wanted to believe that somebody could win, not that they would win, but they could win, well you can. This doubled down instantly too, because after Dolph Ziggler had come out at number one, who is number two? It's the already mentioned returning Chris Jericho and people go crazy for this and you know there was just one guy going well Chris Jericho wouldn't have come back unless he was going to win the Royal Rumble so you planted the seed. The most amazing part of it though is that during his time away Jericho has transformed into John Bon Jovi and my favorite part about that is I made that note and then when I went and did my research and read a bunch of newsletters and stuff everybody was saying the same thing. It is a little bit weird that Cody is number three because I think you should have shoved somebody we hadn't seen in that spot and then you get Santina Morella and you get Kofi Kingston. As always, Morella is not in there for a very long time, although he is able to get his Cobra out, which was not a euphemism and I haven't said. And after Cody gets rid of him, here comes Drew McIntyre. And I tell you, any early footage of Drew McIntyre is great because he has gone from being a baby into like a grizzled bear. I mean, he really does look like he just popped out of the womb, although he only gets around about four minutes, which would never happen these days, when Titus O'Neil arrives in the Rumble and then we get our first surprise because he here is gold dust and of course he goes right after his brother. The fans enjoy this so much and I'm going to tell you I loved it back then and I loved it now. 
To the point it still annoys me that WWE never pulled the trigger on this properly. I mean, we had to build a whole brand new wrestling company in order to get it. Because it's wound me up, I'm going to give that a down. David Atunga, Heath Slater, and Sheamus are the next three. And if you do decide to watch this and go, wait a minute, why has David Atunga got a black eye? Well, apparently, it's because the great Carly stiffed him at a house show. The Irishman is also in mega push mode because he starts clearing the ring like he's in for something huge at Mania. But then you got to WrestleMania, and he was on the losing end of a six-man tag against The Shield. I don't want to make any sense. Lord Tensai and Brodus Clay then arrive in the man we've got stupid gimmicks that never going to work pairing. This is when Cody throws out Goldust. And once again, the crowd are like, damn it, Cody, how did you do it? Seriously, WWE, if you're watching this, why didn't you just get it done? We needed some star power, so Rey Mysterio is in there flying around and we get Darren Young. But really then, the next segment is all about the Kofi. Because in one of his ridiculous Royal Rumble spots, he gets thrown out of the ring, he lands on Lord Tensai's back, he then gets thrown through an ounce table before he gets a steel chair and uses it as a pogo stick to get back in the ring. Now, this is absolutely great and it's so damn impressive. But just imagine this in any other sport. You've clearly been eliminated, but because you did something wacky, we're gonna let you back in. Cody eliminates him almost instantly, so I was like, man, why did we even bother? And this is when we get only our second surprise throughout the entire Royal Rumble, because here is the Godfather. He's got his women, of course, so deep down, you will be feeling a little bit oogly-boogly in your tum-tum. His damn entrance lasts longer than The Undertaker, which is doubly dumb, because he gets in there, and then he's out again. This is down to Dolph Ziggler, so of course he gets booed, and then Wade Barrett runs in there. And I was like, man, why don't we let Wade Barrett get rid of the Godfather? But then you shall forget about everything, because John Cena follows, and of course, he's just like a sniper rifle. It's like, you've gone, you've gone, everybody over the top rope. One of these people too is Cody Rhodes, and that will turn you into Darth Vader, because you'll go, no. Because seconds after, who's the next entrant? Damien Sandow, those two could have helped each other. Daniel Bryan then makes his disappointing arrival at 22, and I'm never gonna get over it. And once again, it's just a moment in time where you wanna point at WWE, prod them, and say, why did it take you so long? Even here in 2013, everybody is doing the yes chance, and they're clearly in love with Bryan. But no, we take another 13 months to pull it off. Cesaro, who is still allowed to be Antonio, the great Carly, who has some terrible chops, and Kane, who is only a few places after Brian, the next three in there. Although I do like this, because we go back to Team Hell No, and we make sure we have some fun. Because after Zack Ryder has entered into the Raw Rumble, Daniel actually gets rid of Kane. But then instantly, he gets knocked off the apron, the big red machine grabs him, and Brian's all like, please, please, put me back into the squared circle. But Kane doesn't do it, he drops him on the floor, I just thought that was really nice. To the point, up. Man, Yawn is there now, and he too is allowed to throw people to the floor because we see him as a star when he is followed by Jinder Mahal. And do not forget, this is future world champion Jinder Mahal. If you had told anybody that back in 2013, they would have slapped you around the face. Cena then takes out Cesaro, and nobody likes that. So once again, you just can't fathom why WWE wasn't able to hear this as well. And then here's The Miz as well as Sin Cara. Ryback finishes at number 30, so it's fair to say this Rumble did need a few more surprises. And it is absolutely nuts to compare this Ryback to the one we have in 2022. Because he was being spoken about being a world champion before we had that bad CM Punk versus Ryback Hell in a Cell match. But even then, WWE wanted to rehab him, hence why he does come in at number 30 and he runs wild. Whereas these days... Well, he just says some very, very strange things. This is proven too because he's allowed to eliminate Randy Orton, which is a big deal. And when you get down to the final three, it is John Cena, it is Sheamus, and yes, it's Mr. Feed Me More. He also takes out the Irishman, so now it's Cena versus Ryback. And this is where everything changes. A few seconds earlier, when he had got rid of the RKO man, everyone's like, boo, Ryback, we hate you. But now, because it's down to Johnny Boy or Ryback, Everybody actually wants Ryback to win. Look, I'm doing conductor hands. We then go into our prerequisite teases to make you think that maybe, maybe Ryback could win. But come on now. Imagine The Rock versus Ryback at WrestleMania 29. I'm a positive Pete and you can't sell me on that. So instead, John Cena grabs him. Out he goes. And now we know where our future lies. And look. This is an okay Royal Rumble. I'm probably never gonna watch it again, but it was fun to watch it twice. 
up. We then cut to The Rock straight away, who is so amped up to do a promo. I mean, he can't stop moving, he's already sweating, and of course he has to drop in the fact that at one point in his life, he only had $7. Now look, this is a very inspiring story, but sometimes you wanna go, Dwayne, Dwayne, we get it, we've heard it a lot. Still is a traditional Rocky promo when he mentions his mum getting over cancer and that he's about to end Punk's 434 title reign. But seriously, he's worse than me. He is so out of breath. He just needs to calm down a little bit. He was telling the truth too, because he was about to become the WW champion, which opens up this massive debate that has been raging on for ages. The Rock versus John Cena part two was fine, but why couldn't we have found a way to squeeze CM Punk in there? And Punk has even said on podcasts and in interviews, he would have been fine going in there and being eliminated after five minutes. Sometimes when I do stare off into the distance and ponder it, I probably think that's what we should have done. Because I don't think it takes away from the mainstream appeal. You still have The Rock versus John Cena. And for all us hardcore nerds, we would have been super happy that CM Punk was in there. But look, we didn't do it, WWE. We still made millions of dollars, so whatever. Obviously, the crowd is super into Rocky, and all of this is built around the fact that Punk has Paul Heyman in his corner. Because anytime the great one gets any kind of offense, Heyman is just going distraction, distraction, and using up all his MP. You also have the fact that The Rock has an injured midsection because The Shield had beaten him up on Raw. So, of course, as soon as Punk is on top, he takes his fist and he punches him in his stomach. He also drops him onto Barry Barricade, applies a leg scissors, and suplexes him into the ropes. And any time he does do this, Heyman is there too, giving him a few shots. The twist is kind of interesting though, because all this turns around when CM Punk goes for something off the top rope and he tweaks his knee. Now this was to tie into the fact that he had had real surgery on his leg, and I suppose that maybe, just maybe, it's all gone bad. But as soon as The Rock sees this, it's like a shark and blood, he just goes after it. I mean, maybe he thought if he did do this, somebody would offer him another movie role in the jungle. And before long, he applies that sharpshooter. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. You can see it's a sharpshooter, but something ain't right. It does end in a great reversal though, because Punk uses this to get into the Anacon device, but The Rock gets out of it by using the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll up. And because CM is a veteran, he knows, well, I've got to kick out of this. So then we're back to neutral. We're into the Spanish announce table before long, but my word, that thing is not into this. Because The Rock is going to give CM Punk the rock bottom through it, but the thing breaks before they can. And honestly, just take a lock during this, he gets a little bit shaken up. They do recover eventually, and poor CM Punk has to take a rock bottom on the floor. And can you imagine that? Dwayne Johnson, one of the biggest superstars in the world, probably whispered, hey, we're gonna have to do it on the mats. And poor Punk has to be like, fine, yeah, if I have to. It is around this part, though, you start thinking about all the stipulations and the story, because one Vince McMahon had said, CM Punk, if the Shield interferes, you're gonna lose your WWE title. But two, it was quite obvious that at some point the shield were going to interfere. So from nowhere the lights go out as if the Undertaker's about to go to the ring and they never turn back on. Instead you hear this like chum pam pow, chum pam 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 and you just hear noises that somebody is getting beaten up while Michael Cole who apparently can see in the dark is all like is the shield, is the shield, the shield are beating up the rock. So I was absolutely dying because when we do get light again it is obvious what has happened but the ref's like well man you know I didn't see it so what do you want me to do? So they may as well have got a gun and they may as well have shot the rock and even though there would have been blood and the murder weapon would have been on the floor a judge would have gone well I don't know what you want me to do about it anyway punk does get the rock back in the wing he's got this huge smile on his face and the official goes one and the official goes two and the official goes three and honestly the reaction to this Nobody can flub and believe it. Sadly, it is a classic dusty finish or a screw job because this is when McMahon does come out. He tells Punk, I'm going to take that title from you because apparently he too has night vision. But The Rock gets on a microphone and he goes, no, no, it can't end that way. I want to beat him. The match restarts. We get the people's elbow. One, two, three, rock the champ. That is always a little bit crap because it makes wrestling feel goofy. But let's be honest, wrestling is goofy. That is why it's really good. And while I'll always stand on my soap books going, if you're doing the Royal Rumble, the Royal Rumble should be a main event. It is a good way to close the show. The Rock is just a superstar. I'm giving it up. And to give you a second opinion before I do leave you today, we shall turn to Dave Meltzer's Wrestling Observer rating. Because he gave Alberto versus the Big Show two and a three quarter stars. The tag team title match got two and a quarter stars. Our Raw Rumble got three and a half stars. And The Rock versus CM Punk, match of the night. 
four stars. Hey, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about the Royal Rumble 2013. Did you re-watch it? And also suggest future suggestions for ups and downs. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com, watch more videos on YouTube, and come follow us on social media. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. I'll see you soon.